Hello, everyone. It's another day for stories on financial realities of binging and weight loss. Have you noticed a change in food spending since recovery? Yes, absolutely. When I was 14 to 16 years old, I was bulimic and a binge eater. I spent all of my babysitting money and money from work I was supposed to be using to save for college on food. I would spend hundreds of dollars per week just on snack foods. I eventually ran out of money and started stealing small things from stores. I felt horrible. I had been saving money for years, and I blew it all in my first year of my ED. Did you have any foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? I loved snack foods. My favorite foods were the muffins you get from the Walmart bakery, ice cream, and chips. I would get family-sized bags of salt and vinegar chips and eat them in less than an hour. I would eat boxes of pretzels and Cheez-Its and Cheetos. I liked collecting huge amounts of food and laying them all out in front of me. I would take tons of pictures, eat it all, and then I would purge. I wasted so much money. I couldn't stop myself from eating, and it was horrible. And I wouldn't eat at all until late at night. I was so out of control, and I would easily spend 50 to to $100 on a binge. Have you noticed a change in medical spending since recovery? Yes. When my parents found out about my bulimia, I was hospitalized for three months, and hospitalizations are so expensive. After that, I was in an ED recovery program nine hours a week for six months, which was also extremely expensive. And in this time, I could only binge. So I just binged. My labs were terrible. I always felt sick. It was hard to do anything. I had a hard time breathing. My period pretty much stopped. It had never stopped while I was underweight, only while I was overweight. Now I'm pretty healthy. I have to take a few supplements every night, but I never really get sick, and I only go to the doctor once a year for a routine checkup. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs since recovery? I started strength training, so I spent around $50 on weights. I have a gym membership that's around $45 a month. It's all totally worth it, and spending $45 per month on a gym is so much better than $150 per week on binge food. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? Plus size clothing is more expensive, and it's not as nice looking either, so I hardly ever bought clothes while I was overweight. The highest weight I ever was was 173 pounds at 5 foot 5. However, I never got rid of the clothes that I wore when I was a normal slash underweight. So far, I've lost 30 pounds. I'm hoping to lose 50 in total. I mostly fit into my old clothes, so I haven't really had to buy anything new, but I usually buy around $100 worth of clothes per year. Did you or anyone around you experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? My ED really hurt my parents. They had to support me through all of it, and they were told to just keep buying me food when I developed BED because, quote, at least they're eating. They also spent at least $57,000 on therapy and hospitalizations and everything else. My parents were very supportive, but they usually just gave me what I wanted, even when it was the opposite of what I needed. After I got out of the hospital, they had no expectations for me. They just wanted me to be alive. And while I get why they thought that, I wish they would have said something when I gained 70 pounds. I know they were told not to comment, but there were times when I needed them to comment. It got to a point where they were spending $800 per month on binge foods for me. I felt terrible about it, and I still do. I've been underweight and overweight, and while neither one is good, I prefer being underweight. It was terrible, and I was always cold, and I couldn't sit comfortably. But when I was overweight, I was at a 28 BMI, and whenever I got a bruise, it took months to heal. I felt slow and groggy all the time. I struggled to breathe, I couldn't fit comfortably in places, I was always sweating, and I was always out of breath. I was extremely depressed and in the worst headspace I had ever been in, but I was told that it was healthy by everyone, and that's how recovery works. Now I'm at a normal weight, and I feel great. I'm not tired all the time, I'm not cold or hot all the time, I can sit down without being in pain. Being on either extreme is awful, and I hope to never be there again. When I was at an ED recovery clinic, they taught us the 10 fundamentals of intuitive eating, they cited the Minnesota starvation experiment as their only source, and they told us that obesity was healthy. They told us you could not tell someone's health by their size, and you couldn't tell if someone has extra fat tissue on them by looking at them. Whenever I used the word overweight, they would say, over what weight? I did use this against them whenever they described me as underweight, though. Thank you so much for your videos. They really helped me. The therapists and dietitians of the clinic basically spouted the same stuff from the fat activist TikToks that you react to, and your videos have really helped me because I wasn't thinking logically, and that wasn't good in recovery. I was just listening to whatever they told me, even when it was wrong. The clinic treated everyone's ED the same. There was this one girl who was really overweight, and she had been previously diagnosed with BED. 
They treated her like she was anorexic, and when she lost the weight, they hospitalized her because, quote, it's impossible to lose weight unless you're starving yourself. It all makes me so angry because there were hardly any ED clinics, especially in the rural south where I lived, and that place didn't help me at all. Your videos helped me more than they ever did. It feels like they were capitalizing off of people's illnesses and are purposefully so extreme so they can keep people there for years and years. Another thing about that place is that none of the staff there lasted more than three months. Well, there was one nurse that was there for six, but everyone hated it there. One of the dietitians there that later quit the clinic now works at a weight loss clinic, proving that she also thought everything they taught there was bullshit. We read through the Health at Every Size book for a solid month. It made me so mad the whole time because it's stupid. It was all so stupid. This next person has lost 85 pounds and has managed to keep 58 pounds of it off even though they have PCOS and hypothyroidism. They gained 20 pounds back due to chronic health complications. For context, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism at 17 after rapid weight gain that went untreated for three years. It affected all aspects of my life, but my symptoms were dismissed until my mom switched me to a different pediatrician. After diagnosis, it took about four years for my thyroid hormones to be regulated with meds. The rest was diet and exercise. I dropped from 220 to 127 pounds at my lowest. My set point is somewhere around 150 to 160 pounds, and I tend to maintain as long as I monitor my condition and watch my diet. My weight is one of the first indications that my thyroid is off. Have you noticed a change in spending on food since weight loss? Definitely. It's no surprise that I tend to gain weight when I eat out too often. Eating out is crazy expensive where I live. Average $12 for a fast food meal and $20 to $25 for a fast casual meal. I went vegan for health reasons about two years ago and saved a fair bit, but it wasn't the diet for me. When I focus on cooking at home and meal prepping, I spend a lot less per week than I did before I lost weight. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? Lattes. I was a syrupy coffee girl in college. That was one of the first things I cut when I started to take my weight loss seriously, and it made a huge difference on both my wallet and my waistline. I would have one or two lattes or coffee drinks per day while I was at school, which was about three to four days a week. Yeah, and my guess is that each of those lattes cost about $5, so that's what, about $30 per week in coffee alone? Not to mention what's probably four to 500 calories per latte. That's a lot. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since weight loss? Not really. I had not so great insurance as a kid, so my condition wasn't covered, but I didn't have any other health issues at the time, so it all balanced out. As an adult, I'm covered by my employer and have no other health issues that would increase my cost of living. That said, my family has all kinds of health issues, and this was a major trigger for me wanting to maintain a healthy lifestyle and improve my quality of life. Some healthcare costs were incurred during my initial diagnosis and treatment because my insurance didn't cover the treatment or medication. I grew up very poor and had very cheap, high-deductible insurance. Visits were about $80 to $150 to see a specialist who charged us at a discount. Mind you, these prices are from the early 2000s. I had to see him every 6 to 12 weeks for the first year, then every 6 months for about 3 years after that. My medications were $100 for a 90-day supply. Nowadays, I pay $80 to see him once or twice a year, and my meds are about $80 for a 90-day supply, with insurance. I'm grateful that I can cover the costs and that it's a relatively inexpensive and manageable condition. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs? Yes. I refuse to pay for a gym membership, but I also got really into running, yoga, and Pilates over the years, so I've purchased a fair bit of equipment. I also do some light strength training, so I've invested into a collection of free weights. I would love to have a Peloton, but I don't have space for it. I also used to pay to take part in races, mostly 5Ks and fun runs. All spending I would never imagine doing before I started my weight loss journey. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size? I find that my overall spending on food is lower than average because I tend to shop for my health and do the same when I'm eating out. I'm more likely to save a portion of my meals when I eat out than I ever was when I was heavy and hungry all the time. These extra portions now go towards lunch or dinner the next day, so I get a buy one get one free meal from most outings. I'm more in touch with my fullness cues after weight loss and maintenance than I was when I was heavy. I also tend to opt for water when I eat out, which saves me about 3 to $4 at most restaurants for a soft drink and at least $12 for an alcoholic drink. Plus, I don't have the sugary coffee drinks that I once had, despite working in the same building as a Starbucks. I'm not saying I never have these things, but it's a treat rather than a regular part of my diet and food spending. This next person has lost 95 pounds. Have you noticed a change in food spending since weight loss? Definitely. 
I rarely eat out now and prefer cooking meals at home, and now when I eat out, I eat less, so no spending on appetizers, desserts, and sweet drinks. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? I save a lot of money not buying snack foods and to-go Starbucks drinks such as lattes because they are no longer part of my diet. I used to spend an insane amount of money on sugary coffee and whatever treats caught my eye at the grocery store. I could never just have one cookie or a handful of chips. I would keep eating until I was stuffed. Now, I'd rather not have those things in my home. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since weight loss? I live in Canada, so I don't pay for my doctor's visits, but without losing weight, I no longer have to pay for my weight-related medications, so I no longer take them. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs? Other than not having to pay for my medicine anymore, no. I lost most of the weight without ever stepping foot in a gym. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? I spend more on clothing now, as I now buy things that last as opposed to things that are cheap and just happen to fit me. Cheap plus-size clothing tends to stretch, rip, and shred a lot easier than standard-size clothing. When I was plus-size, my work pants would shred between my legs from my thighs rubbing together, and that is no longer an issue, so my clothes last a lot longer now. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size? At my heaviest, me and my partner were very concerned with me having to purchase a CPAP machine as they cost well over $2,500 after I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. That was the largest factor to get me to finally get my health in order. Thankfully, I got it together before I ever had to buy the machine. I guess I would say it doesn't feel like I've saved a ton of money because in some ways my food budget has increased as I now focus on good quality food. When I was heavier, yes, I bought more snacks and whatever I was craving, but I also supplemented my diet on a lot of pasta and cheap food. Planning out my meals daily has allowed me less and less trips to the store, and without snacking and going out to eat, I tend to spend the same amount each week as opposed to abrupt spending on binges and nights out. However, inflation has greatly ruined my budget at the moment. This next woman had a binge restrict disorder and has been recovered for three years now. For context, in my country's currency, I earn about $10,000 monthly before tax, and I live alone. But I'm still in my parents' medical care plan, and I'll explain this better in later answers. I don't know exactly what currency this is, but I'm just going to say dollars for simplicity. Have you noticed a change in spending on food since recovery? Personally, I find that this was the biggest financial change. I would only try to buy groceries once a month in bulk, typically high-calorie snack foods or frozen microwavable meals with little to no nutritional value. I would spend at least $5,000 alone on groceries monthly. But unfortunately, I'd buy a month's worth of groceries and then go through them within the first week, which always left me having to go out and buy more. But since I've switched from buying processed unhealthy foods to more fruits, vegetables, and fiber-rich foods that keep you fuller for longer, I now only spend about $3,000 per month, and I've also abandoned snacking as a whole, so I guess that helps a lot too. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since recovery? Now, like I mentioned before, I'm still in my parents' medical care plan. This helps me quite a bit, but it does have its downfalls. How it works is that for each member, a certain amount of funds is delegated to both their medicine and their doctor's visits that the plan is willing to pay for. I'm quite young, so I didn't have the common obesity-related health problems like joint problems just yet. But because of my food habits and purging, I had a very poor immune system and many health issues with my digestive system. I used to get sick at least once every few months, and I generally feel fatigued and miserable on the daily, and even now, I need chronic stomach medicine, which the healthcare plan does not fully cover. Due to this, I have to pay a copayment of $250 every month for my chronic medications, and a doctor's consultation that can go up to $650 if you don't have any funds left in your membership plan. Now, I only see the doctor once a year, which saves me about $1,900 per year on the extra doctor consultations I used to have. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary healthcare costs? I can't really help with this one. I'm not really a gym group exercise type of person. I'm way too shy to exercise with others, and gyms send my germ anxiety into overdrive, so I just go for a two-mile run outside four times a week. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? I used to buy heaps of baby powder because of my sweating and chafing, and body spray because I was paranoid of how I smelled to other people. With a mixture of sweating and purging, I couldn't handle the thought of someone finding me as gross as I found myself at the time, even with reassurances from others. With the clothing aspect, I used to go through pants and underwear like it was nobody's business. 
That constant chafing and stretching of the material wears it out quite quickly, so I'd have to buy a few extra pants every two or three months. Adding everything together, I would spend around $2,500 altogether. Now, these items last longer because my fat isn't stretching the elastic to death and rubbing the material together every time I walk. I only buy clothes every seven to nine months now. And with a body spray, I now have to buy significantly less, and I no longer need to use baby powder. Did you or anyone in your family ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? Ever since I started living alone, I stopped causing strain on my family. But before I moved out, I was 100% the cause of a lot of strain financially and emotionally on my parents. Now, my parents aren't very wealthy people at all. I used to eat a lot and had no self-control whatsoever when it came to stopping. So compared to what I buy in groceries now, my parents used to buy double that amount. This financial stress and the worry for my well-being caused a lot of fighting and tension between my parents and me. All we ever did after a while was argue every time we were together. My mother, who I was really close with, started to get physically ill from the stress alone. I couldn't handle it anymore and decided to move out so they didn't need to pay for my food or worry about my health. We've since worked through it and have patched everything up together. So that's it, I guess. Before, I would spend up to $70,000 annually on everything I mentioned, but now I only spend around $43,000 for the same thing. Dang, that's like a 40% reduction, plus better health. This next person started out at 340 pounds and is now at 165 pounds. Have you noticed a change in food spending since losing weight? I used to go to fast food places all the time and order an insane amount of food. So much so that I had to say I was a party of seven or eight because I was embarrassed about the amount of food I had ordered. I didn't really grocery shop, just snack shop. But in a week between fast food and grocery stores, I spent about $320. Now with my new lifestyle and budgeting, I spend around $75 a week on groceries and about $25 a month on vitamins. This story reminds me of a Key and Peele sketch where this dude is ordering a bunch of pizzas over the phone, but he pretends that there are a bunch of other people in the room that he's also ordering pizzas for, so it doesn't seem as weird that he's ordering multiple giant pizzas just for himself. <laughs> it's great to know that that's actually happening in real life. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? I love Flamin' Hot Cheetos and sour candies. I would just devour them as fast as I could get them. Also, whiskey and stout beer. I remember every night for a long time was fast food cheap hamburgers from different places, about four to six of them, with Cheetos and booze until I fell asleep. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since losing weight? With the medical care, I just never went to the doctor. The first time I had in years was for kidney stones, and it was because I was drinking a 12-pack of soda a day. I also went to the doctor when I had to get a DOT health certificate to drive commercial vehicles, and the doctor told me that I had to take a sleep study because I needed a CPAP machine. Now, I went from 340 pounds at 5'11 to 165 pounds at 5'11, and it's great to go to doctor's appointments and see how happy they are that I've lost all this weight and how great all of my tests come back. So that's been a huge advantage for me as far as life insurance premiums and healthcare premiums. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary healthcare costs? I have two separate gym memberships, and I spend money on quality workout clothes. Vitamins and fish oil pills with a well-balanced diet, I can get away with only spending about $100 per week on myself. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? Clothing. Oh my god. The pit stains were absolutely horrendous. I had so many shirts that the pits were white and basically seemed like they were starched. I went through so many clothes because any friction point would get holes in them within a month or so. Goodwill was my best friend. Hey, this person got plus-size clothes at a thrift store. It's possible. The deodorant, cologne, and every other smell-good thing you could ever imagine I was using, I was using it multiple times a day. I would buy new body washes almost weekly because I had to take so many showers. Being from Georgia, it gets hot and humid, so sweat was always a thing. When I went to Walmart, I was always sweating and always thought they needed to bump up the air conditioning. Now, a bottle of body wash lasts me roughly a month, along with everything else I use. The only issue I have now with Walmart is that it seems too cold all the time. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size? So I'm from a southern family that is large in every way. I have a sister that weighs 375 pounds at 5'3", and aunts and uncles all the way to cousins that weigh roughly the same and have about the same stature. Yes, I am fortunate to be the tallest in my family, but I'm also the smallest. 
Every time we get together as a family, I always get comments on how I need to gain 40 pounds because I look like I'm suffering from cancer or something else ridiculous. I get told that I work out too much and I always hear opinions about my diet. I also hate fried foods now and they can't stand that. I only eat well-balanced diet vegetables, fruits, and lean proteins. So I always get strange looks because I have a large salad bowl with chicken and shrimp that's grilled and comments about how if we weren't supposed to eat fried foods, God wouldn't have made them taste so good. I was raised in a house that food was always available. It was always highly processed garbage. Leftovers for breakfast if you didn't finish the food the night before. Never was taught the difference between healthy and unhealthy foods. So as I grew into my 20s, my wife had to teach me a lot about the differences. I still can't completely fathom the amount of money my family and I wasted on all the empty calories that never truly satisfied me or made me happy. I am proud of my weight loss and my journey. I watch your videos because I feel so bad for the people you feature, but I realized that if I had found them before I stopped binging, every night would have been a binge. No questions asked. I was looking for acceptance. Now I have acceptance from many people who have recovered and many other personal trainers all over the world. This next person has lost 30 pounds and recovered from a binge restrict ED. Have you noticed a change in spending on food since recovery? Yes. When I was binging, I would buy full groceries every week as well as take out multiple times a day. I used to buy more expensive groceries that were labeled as healthy and organic, but it would cost twice as much and I would eat a whole box of healthy granola bars in one to two days. Now that I have more control, I spend about half as much on groceries. I went from spending about $250 to $300 per week to about $125 every two weeks. I rarely let myself eat out anymore, so that saved me about $20 to $30 per day. Per day? That's like six to $900 per month. Did you have any go-to foods that you would spend an excessive amount of money on? I wouldn't spend a lot of money on specific foods. It was more specific meals. I always saw dinner as a more luxurious meal that I could splurge on. So I would go all out and have these $30 dinners every single night and then go home and have basically a second dinner made up of snacks and desserts. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since recovery? No. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs? Yes. I used to have multiple gym memberships and so many gym passes. I was convinced that once I found the right exercise, then I would finally lose the weight. I even hired a personal trainer. Now I belong to my local YMCA and pay about $50 per month, and it has more than I've ever needed. I finally learned that I don't need a million dance workouts if I'm just going to binge and overeat. All I need is a basic workout routine and a healthy normal diet and eating schedule. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? My only other major expense change is hygiene products. I would feel sluggish and disgusting in my body and would constantly break out. So I would buy face creams and masks to make myself feel better because I just materially feel so clean and so much better in my own skin. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? Sort of. My boyfriend at the time liked bigger women. He made it very obvious that he wanted me to get bigger. He would always buy me food and take me out for breakfast and get me anything I wanted. Anytime I would say I don't like my body and that I wanted to try to lose weight, he would laugh at me and say I was too skinny already, then buy me excessive amounts of food. I also feel like I should include this story. I had to be taken to a hospital when I was trying to fly home to celebrate Thanksgiving. I was alone and scared and my stomach hurt so bad I was shaking and sweating and had been vomiting every day for two weeks. They discovered I had gallstones, which was 100% caused by my diet. The only way to get rid of them was to change my diet or else I would need to have my gallbladder removed. I Ubered back to my empty apartment because I had missed my flight and couldn't afford another one. And I binged on everything in my kitchen that night and sobbed for days. I was violently sick for a week and I was in so much pain. I didn't start getting better until about a year after that. That whole year was very painful and very miserable. I finally had to own up to what I was doing. I realized that I was using food to feel good in the moment. I have a lot of past childhood trauma and social anxiety. Food helped me manage my trauma since I gave up alcohol. I didn't even realize how much I was eating. I was just conditioned to start eating. So what I did was write down on my hand a little tally mark every time I ate. So when I would continuously go back to the cabinet to eat another snack, I quickly realized how much I was truly consuming. So that, combined with the fact that I was no longer dating someone who was shoving food in my face every day, I knew I just had to decide that I wasn't going to let this control me anymore. Don't get me wrong, I still struggle with it a lot, and I'm actually starting to have to do the tally marks again because I've had a small relapse, but I'm able to deal with it a lot better now. 
It's a long process, and I know what it's like to make excuses to yourself and try to convince yourself that you're actually healthy when you really aren't. It can get very dangerous very quickly. That's honestly why I love watching your videos. I hate when people make excuses and try to convince the world that they don't have a problem. It's okay to have a problem. Everyone is dealing with something, but you can't expect the world to cater to your issues. All right, that is all the stories I have for today. I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you for submitting them. If you want to submit your story, because I get asked this frequently, if you have lost 75 pounds or more, or you've recovered from binging, you can send me an email or you can send me a DM on Instagram. Both will be linked in my description. You can send me messages there. Also, it might take a long time for me to make a video with your story. I've gotten so many submissions. So many. Over half of the stories in this video I got back in September and just haven't gotten around to putting in a video yet. So it might take a while. Either way, thank you for submitting your stories. I appreciate it and I will see you in my next video.